Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack once more. I hope you like the COVID-19 haircut. My wife did it with the dog clippers. It was a fairly uh, painless but uh, interesting experience nonetheless. Anyway, last time we talked about the concept of GPS disciplining frequency counters or frequency oscillators and generating tuning voltages and all that kind of gubbins. The overview that I talked about is on the screen. Well, if we, uh, that's crashed. Excellent. Adobe Reader used to just work. Then Microsoft got hold of it. And ever since then, it updates itself every 40 seconds and crashes very, very frequently. Thanks, Bill. That's all I say. Anyway, what I was trying to say was that if we simplify that diagram a little bit, we can generate ourselves a very accurate frequency counter that's disciplined by the GPS signal. So what we've got is we've got a one pulse per second signal coming from the GPS receiver. That's being counted by one of the timers inside the microcontroller. Every N seconds, and in this case N will be the gate time of the, uh, of the frequency counter, that will generate an interrupt. And the software interrupt handler will grab the count value from another counter, which is counting an external signal. We can then look at what that count was last time, what that count is this time, subtract one from t'other to work out how many times we've seen a rising edge of our external signal in the gate time that we've got set here. The software can then figure out from the gate time and the number of pulses that we've counted what the frequency of the signal is and display it down here on some kind of screen. So I've developed this a bit more. I've used the my favorite ILA, ILI9341 display, but I've also used a different STM32 processor and written all the code myself. So this was more of an exercise in low level coding of STM32 microcontrollers and understanding how the timers and stuff work. But I'll show you it working anyway, because it seems to work really, really well. As I often say, if you enjoy what I'm doing in this crazy world of mine, please subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. And a thumbs up for the video is always nice too. So this is the latest of the GPS disciplined frequency counter. Um, for those of you playing along at home, this processor is actually, or the microcontroller, is an STM32F746. Um, I happen to have one of these um, Nucleo boards for that processor here. Um, you don't need the F7 capabilities, we're hardly tickling the surface of its um, peripherals and its counters and uh, any of the other stuff that it can do, it can do so much more than, than I'm doing here. But what I've done, I've written a fairly simple driver for this ILI9341 display that I've used in previous projects on the Arduino, but of course on the Arduino I've just reused somebody else's libraries, um, whereas I've had to write them all from scratch here. I've also had to write the code to parse the GPS strings, um, I've had to write the code to talk to all of the peripherals, so it's a more of a sort of technical learning exercise for me really. But what I've got now, I've got an external 35 megahertz signal connected directly to the a0 pin of the microcontroller. I'm not doing any external signal conditioning but you need to be careful that you don't exceed the 3.3 volt limit so we would have to do something if we were going to use this as a proper project. Um, these two buttons on the screen here alter the gate time so you can set the gate time for the counting from one or five, sorry, one, two, five or ten seconds. And then I've also introduced the concept of band one and band two. Now at the moment band two simply switches on an LED and alters the maths internally. Um, but what that will do would be to switch in an external divide by 128 prescaler so that would allow the frequency counters to go up into the gigahertz range 2.5 I think I calculated gigahertz or thereabouts um, so it all kind of works um, as a proof of concept I'm more than there I could stick this in a box and use it as it's very very accurate um, but I'll show you in a couple of seconds why I don't think I'm going to bother So the reason that I won't be taking this project any further is because no matter how much newfangled wizardry I can invent using these microcontrollers for accurate frequency counting, I still prefer the HP Nixie Tube counter that I've got here. A thing of beauty is a joy to behold. The other thing I wanted to just share with you 
as I was, as you know, I'm a big fan of these STM32 uh, very small blue pill boards. These have got a an F103 processor on the on the board, and you can buy these for about three bob and a conker from the Far East delivered. Now, I've been writing some code to generate purely as a technical exercise to make myself an accurate shack clock, and again, I've used a GPS to discipline this but this includes a real-time clock inside the microcontroller so I've used the GPS to grab the GPS date and time use that to set the uh, real-time clock inside the microcontroller and then written a whole bunch of software to do all of the things that we wanted to do like daylight saving calculations and all that kind of gubbins and then I realized that this board that I've got here which contains an F303 STM32 microcontroller. The real-time clock in this controller also includes all of the daylight saving calculations and algorithms and all the other gubbins that I spent ages and ages writing. Hey, what do you know? This costs also three bob, and I think it's two conkers delivered from the Far East. This came from a, a website called Robot Din. Uh, very, very cheap boards, seem to work very well, work well with the STM32 cube IDE. I've had no difficulties programming them using an ST link through this connector here. Or you can use this to your PC and move a jumper and this is also supported by the Arduino IDE. What could be more fun? So this is the clock I was telling you about. Uh, it runs using a blue pill grabs the date and the time from the GPS string, sets the real-time clock inside the microcontroller, it actually updates itself every 2 a.m., does all the daylight saving calculations and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you can see, but there's a number on the screen here, 4450. That's the number of days since a very significant event in my life, and it's not my wedding or anything silly like that. Um, the other thing to show you while we're, while we're over in this bit of the shack, this is my ZAZ uh, frequency reference. So this is my GPS disciplined 10 megahertz reference that I use throughout the shack. That's what then these signals feed off to various splitter amplifiers that uh, feed 10 megahertz signals to my uh, spectrum analyzers, my frequency counters, all of that kind of stuff. All the gear in the shack is all synchronized against this one frequency standard. Remembering that man with two watches never know correct time i don't have any other frequency references that i use uh, to synchronize my test gear this is another test equipment acquisition syndrome problem that came uh, off ebay or something and i resurrected this it's just connected to my oxo purely because i can there's no reason to have that there other than it's got glorious nixie tubes inside it and this this is um an sv1 afn i think it is i can't remember his call sign properly but this is a a GPS splitter so there's a GPS antenna connected here and then it splits three so I can run three different GPS devices off one external antenna brilliant